So if you get our chairman at, at Rackspace, uh, Graham Weston, at a bar or something, and you start talking with him, he's probably going to bring up Strengths Finder at some point in the conversation because he he it's like a religion with Graham, and that's how he built Rackspace. He he figured out how to build teams using the strengths of people to get the right kind of team together. And we'll talk a lot more about that in this interview with Good Goodco because Goodco has a new way, a new twist on the Strengths Finder system to help people find jobs, get to, together on teams, and see if they would be compatible uh, with the culture of that company that they're thinking of joining. And we're gonna see good go right now. Here, and who are you? Good, I'm Samar, how are you? Samar Barbadkar, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Good Company. Um, my background is working in digital advertising agencies, working in product innovation and branding for large technology internet companies like Microsoft, Yahoo. Over the years, I've had several different jobs all over the place. When I was in school, interestingly, I, I worked at you know, Mattel's and drove cabs, and before that in India, I worked at a call center, one of those infamous call center folks. Um, I probably called you a long time ago. Um, but since then, since I started working in advertising agencies, I worked at several different places, and that has really framed my perception about work life and balance and what makes people happy overall. Um, that really led to um, us starting Goodco. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like the Strengths Finder system. I've talked with Graham a lot about it. I studied it even at Microsoft. We took a class to understand what it was from, I think, the guy who wrote the system. Uh, he's a Gallup employee, by the way. And he came up with a, a short test that mm -hmm. you take with several questions. And he, out of that, you would get five strengths, right? And one of mine is woo, which, hey, <laughs> I, I'm good at wooing people. I'm good at uh, getting You are. Them. Getting them to see my point of view. Which <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, that's a great skill to have, and, and especially for what you do, your archetypes are pretty true, yeah. um, which is a straight shooter and the go-getter. And, and anyone who knows anything about you would, would, would probably agree with that. And to your point about Graham Wesson and Gallup, uh, Graham Wesson actually calls us strength finder on steroids, wh which is quite true. Essentially, what strength finder is, um, is it's a great system. It's, it's, it's a survey that's you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes long that helps you identify your strengths and allows you to focus on that. And for team leaders, allows them to create more effective organizations and teams that work well together. Yeah. Um, what we noticed was that very often people have a hard time, although they intrinsically sometimes know that they're good at certain things, but very, it's defined it very hard to articulate that yeah. and also identify that and how do we make, how do I capitalize on my skills and find the right career path for me. So what Goodco does is a very millennial friendly, um, three minute long, fun, engaging, um, you know, slider skill questions that allow you to kind of identify your strengths. The shell is very fun, uh, with, with, although there is strong psychometric science behind it. We focus on creating a system that makes it a lot more relatable, personable. So there are characters like Kanye West and Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Hillary Clinton, um, that are the shell for the psychometric um, science that one of our co-founders, Dr. Dr. Kerry Schofield, yeah. um, who's a PhD from Oxford, helped us develop. And it's really a frictionless way of identifying your strengths, this whole self-discovery process. Well, let's talk about what it is. Because I, I took the test, and, I, and it's, you, you, you said it right, it's a bunch of sliders. And it sort of matched what my strengths were out of StrengthsFinder, even though it was a shorter test. But then you, you showed me, oh, let's see if you could work at Google, or work at FedEx, or work at XYZ Company. And it told me right away, oh, this would not be a good cultural fit for me. This company is, is more engineering driven than, right. than you would be good at, right? Um, tell, me, uh, tell me what I would learn, what a, a user would learn from, put sure. it, from doing that three minute test and, and joining sure. the system. So as you see on the side, um, the whole strengths discovery side um, part is just the entry point into the experience because that, that is like a jumping point to discover the places that you would work well at or the people that you mesh well with, or how do you work in certain teams, and also the companies yeah. that will allow you to thrive given what your strengths are. So if you look at your um, strengths canvas, is what we call it, 
um, which is a description of your strengths and who you are, very customized to how you answer those 15 questions. And this questions. is mine, right? This so is, so yeah. I signed in here, and so you're seeing Robert Scoble's uh, version. It's, it, right. If, if, if somebody else took the test, they would have a different, completely different page. Absolutely, and it's all very customized, and generally people end up with a mix of two to three different archetypes because there is no true um, Stephen Colbert, right? Um, so Stephen Colbert is, the, is a personification of the straight shooter. Um, and Kanye West is the go-getter, and this is your sort of a combination of these two archetypes. So this is the description of each one. Um, this is the scores that you would have on each of the different different attributes that are the defining elements of someone's personality. Yeah. Um, what you also get is uh, the ability to see the type of organization that you would thrive most in. So beyond the 16 personal archetypes that are based on these celebrity characters, there are eight organizational archetypes that we've created based on 20 years of historical research and some of our own testing that um, use different dimensions, like the attitude of organization, the motivation, you know, how large they are, small they are, a lot of different functional elements that are mapped to a psychometric model yeah. that align well with certain personality the, types. Now this, this uh, uh, as more people use your system, the matching gets better. It right? does. Because as more Google employees come in, you'll n your system will learn more about the kind of person that already works at Google and will uh, figure out the kinds of attributes that it has culturally so it can see whether you'll be a, a good match for the company. Absolutely. What we call it is a transparent cult culture graph of talent and companies. And, and the, the reason behind creating something like this was actually pretty simple. A lot of times, people, when they walk into organizations accept a job, um, it's not exactly clear what they're walking into. Um, and especially since our organizations are generally a collection of microcultures that exist that define your experience within the company more than just the overall organization culture. And on the flip side for employers, it's, it's an unbiased scientific way of being able to gauge the kind of people that A, they already have what their cultural footprint is, and B, the kind of people that will thrive in their unique cultures. So um, a Google, for example, is actually, actually very different in product management versus product management at Yahoo, let alone um, product management at Google versus marketing at Google. Yeah. Right? So there are certain skills that are really defined or personality traits that are defined by the people that are already, already existing on a team and how you would fit in there. And every team's going to be different, right? If, if I'm studying uh, oh, the marketing team at Google, and well, they don't really, the, let's call it the PR team at Google, is probably different culturally than the engineering team that's building Gmail, for instance, right? So if you're trying to get onto the engineering mm -hmm. team at Gmail, you can really see the cultural fit there if, if there's enough data. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I know that in my uh, looking at other people at Rackspace, that some of them um, showed that there wasn't a tight cultural fit. And I'm doing great here at Rackspace, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm not working with a lot of them day right. to day. I meet them in the hall for three minutes, and I, I don't have to be on a team with them building something. Right? right. It's a great system that allows employers to create ad hoc teams or optimize teams internally. Yeah. Um, what we're initially focused on is the ability to let people know what kind of organizations that they would thrive in and for employers to recruit the right talent because the recruiting system in many ways is, is so broken today yeah. because the internet has solved many problems in terms of sourcing because applying for jobs has become so much easier but it's also paralyzed the system in many ways i mean the cost and time to hire is the highest it's ever been and especially among millennials who are the, their, their next job is not just about the paychecks it's, it's also about uh, if they share common beliefs and values with their employers, that's actually a lot more valuable. Yeah. And workplaces haven't evolved as quickly as our expectations of workplaces, the level of transparency needed. So the, the, the transparent culture graph really get, gets smarter every day as more and more people not just identify their strengths, the other part, which is find their fit score with their current teams. Yeah. Um, let's, let's look at my results sure. and compare them to some other people and maybe some companies. Yeah. Um, so it, let's pretend I'm looking for a job, right? Yeah. Um, let's pretend I want an engineering job working for uh, Mark Interante, who uh, is on cloud. I saw he's one of my friends that has already tested me out. So let's go to his account sure. and see uh, what's happening. Now, um, I'm not a coder. So does it pick up on that I really don't have the skills to do the job? Or is it just looking at my personality types? You know, am I likely to get along with the guy? So we believe that skill testing is an important aspect. If you've signed in through LinkedIn or Facebook, we pick up some of your skill, skills from there, the basic skills that you've been most, um, that, that you've gotten most reviews for. 
Yeah. Um, but we feel like skills in conjunction with personality testing gets you the best results. Yeah. Um, so you want to check what Mark Mike? Oh. Yeah, right there. So let's nope, see nope, what you're... Not nope. Michael, Mark in Toronto. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. He runs cloud. So if you... Uh, now, this is a sort of open system, right? It, by the way, when you sign up, you can decide whether to be public and let people check you out or yeah. be private and not let people check you out. Yeah, right? so there are some pretty detailed privacy settings um, which allow you to giving people permission to check their fit score with you and things like that and also if you want to make your fit score with your current organization or past organizations public or private but if your public fit score is available you can easily go check your fit score and especially if you log into LinkedIn or Facebook it picks up your connections there identifies the people that are already on good code and allows you to invite them back into the system right. so it's really the curiosity of wanting to find your fit score with people and how your personalities match and I'll keep mine public because I'm public anyways and I, I, I don't care <laughs> but uh, Mark might care <laughs> if uh, people start uh, so this probably created yeah. a notification that told Mark that you checked your personality with him yeah. um, and to decode these are the three big components of your fit score. The workplace harmony is, is really the most important. And what which, does that mean? What, what it means is how you would work with someone in an in a organizational setting. Okay. Um, what are the chances of you guys getting along and working well together? Just taking two independent entities, not the team yet. Uh, so if, if your attitude is high on innovation and transparency and the other person's isn't, um, it's probably not going to be a good match, but if you're both high on empathy, it's definitely going to be a good match. So and what number should I be looking for in, in the, this workplace harmony so to, to know that I... Uh, well, tell yeah. me about the numbers, because I want to know, is Mark going to be a good guy to work with for me? And uh, it, can I tell that from the number here? Um, you can tell somewhat in this particular case, because the numbers, your workplace harmony score is 58. Which, you know, it's out not too good or too bad out of 100. Okay. Um, anything over 70 is very good. So it's unquestionably you guys are going to work well together. Um, but anything over 30 is also not, it's, it's the opposite, which is negative. Uh, somewhere in between is like a mid size. Maybe there are certain areas that you guys could work on to work better together. Um, the other component, which is the shared values, that really goes to whether you guys can go and have, would want to have a beer after work. Um, if you have social, priorities that are aligned with each other and outlook towards life that is well aligned. And complementary really talks about, which is your score of 43, which is somewhat on the higher side because complementary skills, which is um, the things that you value in your work life and your life and your, and your values also, um, how aligned you are on that. What are the strengths that you guys commonly have? One of the things is between you and Mark is um, you both have really high energy and high drive. Yeah. So it, it's really highlighting the positives of the relationship that you can focus on if you're having any conflict at work, for example. Um, the other thing is you're both pretty original in your ideas and, and that makes for a good fit. This yep. gives you a little more detail on the commonalities and differences on each of these different factors, which is innovation, energy, reliability, empathy, authority, and, and drive. Um, can we go and compare my uh, profile to Rackspace, for instance, and see, sure. uh, hey, what, should I be really be working at Rackspace? Sure. <laughs> um, I'm, this might be dangerous to do on camera because I might get fired now. But <laughs> well, let's hope not. Um, it, it actually in fact, by the way, uh, Rocky uh, doesn't want to participate in the system because of that. There's a lot of fear of opening yourself up to these oh, I don't want to give my uh, yeah. employer that much uh, knowledge about how I fit into teams and stuff That's like that. That's true. I mean, it's, it's a very valid concern. Yeah. But our, our ideology coming into this was, and this is based on a ton of research around it also, which is there is no such thing as a negative or a bad employer or a bad employee. When things don't work out, it's necessarily because it's a bad fit. Like your values and strengths are not aligned with what the employer is offering and what's really working for the employer. And a good example we like to use is USAA, for example. It's, it's a very militaristic organization because of its roots. But what you also notice is it's been rated as a top 20 employer in the country um, for many years in a row. That's primarily because they're focused on the things that they're good at and focus on attracting people that will thrive in their unique cultures. Yeah. Um, and the system has very much been as like an arranged marriage so far, if you think about it, where employers have the responsibility of trying to find that right fit but not really involving the 98%, but when you involve the 98%, tell them what their strengths are. If they wanna be something else or you know, progress through their career, these are the things that you should focus on. But also allows for a co-selection of the job fit, not just coming from one side, but also allowing people to find the right employers. 
So your fit score, let's check your fit score with the wax base. That's great. 76, um, which, which really talks about you guys are pretty aligned the, on. Now, is the average 50 or uh, is, there, is there an average? It's a, it's a similar scale. Anything above 70 is, is considered to be pretty good. And this interface is actually evolving right now as we speak. The version 2 is going to have those similar three factors that, we, that you saw on the peer-to-peer -peer fit score. But what this is essentially telling us is that you know, you were very well aligned with Rackspace overall organization culture. You're both innovative, competitive, um, are flexible in your approach, have some level of ideology in the way you go about doing things. Yep. Um, but uh, maybe Rackspace is not ideal for your personality, which maybe you would like to take a lot of things on at the same time, and Rackspace's overall culture isn't. Um, the first POV that you see on Rackspace is based on our assessment of tons of functional characters about the company, about how long they've been in business, yep. the revenue from new products versus old products, employees, locations, how many acquisitions they've made, which allow us to get to these archetypes. Now, it's interesting that uh, you, you, you picked up high stress. I, I've figured out how to get a job that is high stress and highly available and has uh, many different things going on at the same time. So even though the company might not seem like a good place for somebody like me right. to join up because I, I need that that action. Mm -hmm. in, in my case, I found a role in the company that does have that action. Ex exactly. So th these are guidelines. They're not absolutes. It yeah, just it, because it says Google isn't good for me doesn't mean I might not find a job at Google that is good for me. Right? Absolutely. And it goes back to what we've seen in a lot of research, too. It's the, it's the microcultures in the organization. If you're able right. to carve out for yourself um, the right role. I mean, there is about 20 to 30 percent influence of the overall organization culture, yeah. but really your experience is defined by the eight to 10 people or 20 people that you work with in a specific team. Um, let's go try some other companies. I see, sure. you know, maybe uh, Microsoft or Apple. Yeah, let's yeah. look at your fit with Apple. So far, we have about 500 employers in the system. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we're adding six, 700 more employers. And organically, you will see that this has gotten a ton of traction internally within companies, Apple, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, Microsoft. So a couple of people figure, find out about it, and then it grows organic. So we have a few hundred people in each of these companies. And you'll see these internal fit scores then informing those microcultures. So you'll be able to see um, teams within each of these companies and how you would fit within each of those teams. So, and so, so here you can see it, it's a little bit lower number, not much, but a yeah. little bit lower. But you also see that you're not a great fit in terms of flexibility. So mm -hmm. Apple seems a little bit more structured in the way they approach and very yeah. militaristic in some ways. I, um, yeah. And you may not thrive very well in that environment. And it's a really good benchmark to see if, you know, if it's worth spending the energy trying to find a job at Apple versus the companies that you might be a good, better fit for. Uh, and that totally explains you know, they're, they're very secretive, they're Absolutely. very, you know, they don't let you break the rules, they don't let you be social media. I wouldn't fit in Apple very well, which you didn't even pull out, um, you know, be, because the job I do, I couldn't really do at Apple. But uh, yeah. let's try some more. Let's, let's try another company. Um, What's another company? That w do you have you Facebook in there? Or? Um, I don't think we have Facebook or, uh, in there yet, but it's coming in the next couple of weeks. All right. Well, give me, a give me some companies and let's see what, the, what it looks like. Scroll down and just see what sure. kind of companies. Yeah, we could go to Microsoft. Microsoft. I've worked at Microsoft, so I, it'll be interesting to see how accurate that is. Oh, you're actually a lower fit for Microsoft. Interesting. Um, because it seems like overall the culture is not as competitive as you would like it to be. Oh, that's um, true. <laughs> and, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And you know, it kind of explains. I, I, we feel like there's winds of change happening in Microsoft right now, and um, they're really going through an organizational upheaval for the better. Yeah. But it's lagged in innovation, probably because they're not. They haven't been as competitive as they would like to be. Yeah. Not that different teams within Microsoft haven't, but given the overall footprint of the culture. Um, you may be a lesser fit, so if your next opportunity you probably shouldn't court Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, I, I already knew that. Let's go. Let's go and look at some of the other companies that are in here, and let's pick some random ones that I would. Sure. Be. Um, let's. Uh, let's see. You know, like uh, Accenture. You know, oh, let's, let's see Accenture. Yeah, that's a. Um, Not a great fit for Accenture either. Yeah. Um, now it'd be interesting to just tell me uh, what company companies I should actually apply to. You know, yeah. have you make me a list of companies I have a 70 score or higher. So with. let's look at Mountaineering Expeditions, which it said was a good ah. fit for you because based on your personal canvas, right? Um, so Twitter, 
apparently it's going to be a good fit for you. Let's see what your exact fit score is, which is 78. Um, it's similar to, to Rackspace um, because they have those same traits that your personality, that will allow your personality to thrive in. Yeah. Um, although there are functional skills characteristics also that need to be looked into. Um, let's go back to Mark Mirroring Expedition and see what other companies it pops up. Um, Amazon, good co. Hey, let's see, uh, let's see if I can let's work for good co. Let's good co. Nah. Oh. Nah. Maybe not. <laughs> I won't get a job offer today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when the team becomes larger. And this is based on our internal employee um, perspective on how their experience has been with the company yeah. in the last year that we've been around. So we're more like a space colony. There are some elements of a monitoring expedition. So space colony is more like um, a very challenging environment, but also feels like a bit of a nuclear family where we're all very supportive of each other. Yeah. Um, and that sort of explains, I, you know, being in a startup is quite a different skill yeah. than being in a company with 5,000 employees Absolutely. where I can float around and do a lot of different things. Yeah. And this is based on 10 people on our team and our perception. So a smaller organization also impacts the overall cultural footprint or fit with them. Yeah. Um, let's look at some other ones. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Vogue magazine might be, or let's try Bose. Bose? Yeah. Let's do it. Something that's totally upside. You'd be an okay fit with Bose. Yeah. Um, it's 68. Um, wh now, what do you ever see a 90 or a 100? You know? We do, sometimes, um, when everything is really well aligned. And the system's getting better, too, at, at processing this data and identifying fit, especially when the insider reviews and fit scores start um, showing up in these, so you'll be able to yeah. see, maybe I'm not a good fit for Bose, but maybe there is a product development team or the PR team at Bose that I'd be a really good fit for. So, so right here, I, we don't need to go much further. Mm -hmm. You see, if I'm looking for a job, like my brother-in-law is looking for a job, it gives him some new companies to think about that he might not have thought about. And if he had a company like uh, Apple in his head, and then he realizes, oh, that's not a really good cultural fit for me, mm -hmm. maybe it'll get him to think differently about his career and where, he, Absolutely. where he's going to go. The idea is to kind of narrow the net a little bit yeah. for employees and employers both. It's, it's that whole idea of co-selection where there may be companies that have really strong cultures and would be a really good fit for you that you haven't considered because they're not a Facebook or a Google. Now, if, if you clicked on like Rackspace, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and did this uh, uh, you know, check. Does somebody at Rackspace get an email or a... Not yet. Okay. Um, one of the things that... Because that would be a good recruiting yeah. thing. The recruiting manager could get a, a list of, here are 100 people, uh, right. look for a cultural fit, and 15 of them were really high, high cultural fits. Those are probably people that we want to go after, right. right? That's one of the things that we're actually releasing with our enterprise product in about two months, which allows um, companies like Rackspace to have their cultural showcase that's a lot richer both with scientific good co information as well as rich information about you know blogs videos and things like that and be able to assess fit of inbound candidates as well as identify candidates that will be a good fit for the teams that they have within the company cool. um, so that's definitely coming we didn't cover it does this cost any money to try for an individual for the users it's completely free completely a lot free. of these tools that are not very software based um, cost money but we feel like there's a ton of value for the user. And is, um, there, a, is there a fee for the company to be on here? For the what? company, the enterprise offering, yeah. um, for smaller teams, startups, it's going to be absolutely free. It allows them to take a more in-depth survey about their company and create a public showcase about their organization culture. So our goal is to allow startups, small businesses, mid-sized employers to become a lot more competitive in the market space also. Um, because if you're not a marquee name, it becomes hard to attract high quality, high fit talent and showcase the things that they can offer to those folks and, and attract this talent and assess the fit. Um, long term, in the next six to nine months, we're also working on a product that allows organizations to get an in-depth assessment of their organization culture, create better, more ad hoc teams, and create structures that work well together. Cool. Um, the other thing for the employers, uh, for the users, is that one of the most used features on the site is people can answer these similar, similar 15 questions about an employer they currently work with or have worked with in the past and find their fit score with their manager and their overall team. Mm. So we can tell you based on your questions about your manager, so things like, um, does your manager approach situations like a boxer or a fencer? Or um, these very sub questions that get to the sub-psychological level will tell you if you're a good fit for the, with your manager or not. So 
it pinpointed why I quit my last job. Yeah. Um, when I joined my last company, it was because of the external perception of the company on the street, but it was a completely different story internally. Um, so it was to create that level of transparency is why Goodco came about. So I was actually a really good fit for my company overall, but not a great fit with my, the manager I would potentially be working with, yeah. um, which defined my experience and you know why I quit to do Goodco. Wow, there's a lot here we could talk for a long time. Yeah. Um, about how to, you know, as a team builder now, you know, if, if you're going to be a manager, what personality types do you want on that team? Because you don't want all of, of one type because that yeah. doesn't build a good team, we, right? I don't want 15 quarterbacks on my uh, football absolutely. team. I want a, a You need back, a, a, a well-rounded skill set. A, yeah. a kicker, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. And which is where the, the team function comes in, where yeah. people that you work with, you can invite them to your team. So for example, this is, oh, this is an example of a team report, but you can take a team, you can invite people that you work with like Rocky or a bunch of other folks that you interface with regularly, and it'll give you an archetype of your overall team, your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, I might be able to show you our team, for example. And what it does is it also allows you to do some scenario modeling. If you were to hire this person, how that would impact the overall culture of our team and the dynamics. Um, so let's look at, um, our team. So, oh, by the way, this is um, this was my fit score with my last employer, and why things didn't work out. So I was a really low fit with my manager, um, but with my overall with the overall organization, I was a pretty good fit for. Yeah. Um, but with the team stuff, what it allows you to do is see what your strengths and weaknesses are as an overall team, for example. Things that we and do well. And this is all based on the same three minutes. It's all based on the same three minute, text. 15 question um, canvas, we call it. We, we had got a survey, but, um, and we're actually able to collect a ton more data points than, than is obvious because it's on a slider scale and there's a spectrum. And it really looks at the patterns within those questions. The algorithm recognizes that. And because the questions are not as obvious, like you know, are you analytical or creative, it's more about do you like to stare at neat cornrows or at crop circles, right? So it gives us a sense for their thinking around innovation and risk taking and things like that. How did you come up with these questions and get enough accuracy out of what, what the answer is? So it was, it was a nine month process to come up with the first set of questions. Um, so we started with about 800 questions. And one of the things we noticed in, in the more legacy systems was that it was, a lot, it was very repetitive, very gameable, and took 30 minutes or so. Our goal was to keep it as frictionless as possible. So we actually tested with about 15,000 users um, before we even launched the version one. And it's actually, it's getting smarter. Um, every week as more and more people take the survey. So right now we're getting about between a 90, 95% accuracy level in being able to decode people's personality and strengths in, in about three minutes. It's a work in progress, but it's right, thanks cool. to Carrie who's helped us you know, yeah, you your team's here in the room. Uh, tell me a little bit about the company you're building and how are you funded and what is sure. the team? At, what, what's your strengths? Maybe you can point to them on the screen. Um, so yeah. our team, we're great at generating ideas and are creative. Sometimes we may be too eager to fix that things that may not be broken. Yeah. Um, because we are all, a lot of us are product guys and you want to build cool things. So that's one of the things that, that we need to balance on. We are warm, friendly, um, very nurturing in our, in our team structure. Um, we really stick by our decisions and, and balance things with innovation, with the things that are right and practical. Um, what we're, we started this about a year ago with me, Subu, Tio, and Kerry, the four of us, um, really getting on this project and trying to create bottom-up transparency and really revolutionize hiring by creating a product that allows for cultural analytics becoming more important in the hiring process. Um, we went to Techstars early this year with a prototype. We finished that and on demo day we launched a pub, the private beta of the product. Since then, we've gotten about 38,000 users organically. Um, a lot of that is happening virally because people are checking their fit scores with others. I want to check their fit scores with companies. So that's definitely great news. Um, our background is mostly in developing digital consumer products for, for large clients working at agencies. So we get what makes people share that, click that share button. Yeah. Um, when you offer compelling value every step of the way, organic growth will follow. Um, beyond that, we are almost done with our seed round. We, we're, we're about 90% closed, 90% of our seed round, which is 1.25 million convertible round. And you know, w we have amazing investors and, and, and advisors like Graham Weston and a bunch of other folks that really believe in what this can offer and the value it has in terms of um, disrupting how hiring is done today. Very cool. And I can totally see why Graham would put some money into this because uh, he is so passionate about the strengths and 
and he really re realizes that's a good way to build teams and manage teams and manage your careers and, and he's been a great people. champion for us yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thanks so nice much. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Where do we get it? Where do we um, try it? Good.co. You can use the access code goodcofb, um, F, FB for Facebook, which is an access code that will let you into the private beta um, over the next three weeks before we go public. Very cool. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you. Really nice cool stuff, you. and I, I, I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. So Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks.